Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is a frequently asked questions for nurses who want to become medical coders. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. So I had already had this episode planned out today, but then I got a really good comment from a viewer and uh, just today, <laughs> and I said, well, let me go ahead and add this comment to the video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the comment reads, and thank you to the viewer who commented this. Um, she says, I am wondering if a CPCA or a CCA would be the most beneficial to obtain for an RN. I was looking into a RHIT certification, but I'm not looking for a managerial position. I was wondering if nurses have to take a large pay cut also. Someone told me that you start out in coding making $10 an hour. I'm wondering if this is accurate. So here's the thing. I normally do not address salary questions on my channel. However, this I cannot <laughs> avoid. $10 an hour is entirely too low. That's number one. Number two, that is simply not true. And especially for somebody that is a nurse, all right? When employers see nurses who want to become medical coders and have their certifications, they get very excited because nurses have the added benefit of really understanding anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, and pharmacology. They know all of these things already. Whereas a regular coder who doesn't have any background in medical has to work to get to that knowledge base, right? It's already built in with a nurse. Number two, nurses really know about the documentation and what it's supposed to look like and what could potentially be missing. This is why a lot of times nurses are tapped to be the clinical documentation improvement uh, coders so or the educators for the providers because they already have an established relationship. A, a doctor will look at a coder and look at a nurse and really kind of gravitate more towards the nurse nine times out of ten. That is just their natural uh, <laughs> habit to do that. Um, so that's another reason why a lot of employers like to have nurses on staff because of the simple fact that you know it does make things a lot easier with communication because nurses already know how to communicate with doctors. The other thing is this. When it comes to nurses learning medical coding, the question that I get the most is, is it easy for nurses to learn medical coding? It's really not. Um, I have trained many nurses. There are some nurses that get it, and then there are some nurses that just don't get it. This is not the same as code selection. Medical coding is not just code selection. Code selection is a lot of what nurses do when they're working with the doctors. Oh yeah, I, I did the coding for the doctor. Coding for the doctor is selecting from a pre, like a, a, a pre list of all the usual uh, diagnoses and procedures, right? Uh, that's not what we do as medical coders. What we do is look at the documentation and really um, comprehend what we're reading. And that way we can apply the rules and apply all of the codes that can apply. <laughs> Nurses have a thing where they have their nurse hat on. I've seen them do this because I've trained, like I said, I've trained nurses before. So nurses will leave their nurse hat on and still sort of think like a nurse and assume that there's things there that it's not very clear. There are things that are going to be understood in the documentation and that um, they're going to use different words to describe. And if it, if it fits, it fits. Um, however, you have to be careful because we can never assume. So as long as the documentation is supporting, that's one thing. If it's not supporting and it's just, oh, well, that's just a normal part of the disease process or it's just, a, it's just understood this part, um, it's not always the case. So you really have to make sure that when you are interpreting the documentation that everything is there. <laughs> and that is a huge thing in medical coding because if it's not documented, it did not happen and you will hear that quite often. <laughs> as far as taking a pay cut, I normally do not address uh, salary questions on my channel because of the simple fact that everywhere you go, there's there's salary talk. In, in, whether it's really high and ridiculously high or ridiculously low, like uh, with this, what this viewer had heard, $10 an hour. So it depends on where you're going and it depends on your education and it depends on your experience. That has a lot 
of factors to do with what they're going to start you off at. So don't ever assume that if when you hear something like that, that it's absolutely true because it's not. You can look in the job listings and sometimes it'll tell you what the uh, what they're going to be paying and other times it's not. Um, when you're looking at, well, uh, is it going to be a huge pay cut for a nurse to go from nurse to coder? Believe it or not, it depends on where you are. Sometimes medical coders make more than the nurse. And in my facility, that's the case. The coders make more than a lot of the nurses do, like a vast majority of the nurses. So there's a difference there and it depends on where you are, which is another reason why I don't really have specific numbers when it comes to uh, salary talk. (laughs) Um, Although I still get people who get upset with me. There's nothing that I can do if you get upset about that. Uh, You can look at the Department of Labor or the Bureau of Statistics and in your area, right, you put in your zip code and it'll say what the starting salary is for a medical coder or health information technician in your area. And so that way you'll be able to see because somebody in California is going to make different from somebody in New York or somebody in Texas is going to make different from somebody in Michigan. It really all depends. When it comes to learning medical coding, it's a lot more than just knowing your anatomy, physiology, and medical terminology. You really have to understand how to apply the rules. And when you're applying the rules, that's can, what can trip a lot of people up. And um, especially with nurses, it's, it's not something that's going to be guaranteed just because you're a nurse. And um, like I said, I've seen it where, because I've trained them, <laughs> and I've seen where they get it right away. And I've seen where they don't understand and you have to kind of take a few runs at it to get them to kind of get in the right direction, right? Um, Another question that I get a lot is uh, they immediately want to work at home. And I know right now we're all in this pandemic and there's a lot of people that are working from home. (laughs) However, when it comes to being a brand new medical coder, typically in a non-pandemic world, Medical coders that are brand new do not get to work at home because they want you at the facility because you are going to want to be around other medical coders because you're going to have lots of questions. Whether you want to admit it or not, you're going to have to have somebody around you to help you. But if you apply at a place that you have to go, say when you get your certification and you go into the real world and you want to apply immediately for remote coding positions, remote coding positions are reserved for coders who have had experience. If you apply at a place that you have to physically go right now, they're going to send you home because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Sometimes they will have you working at the facility for a couple of weeks, a few weeks maybe, and then they'll send you home. So it really depends again on where you're applying. That being said, uh, a lot of nurses have asked me, well, you know, I just want to um, do this so that I can I can travel and I can uh, I can just do this remotely. You can't travel doing uh, medical coding, guys. You can't because there are restrictions on where you can be. That's number one. Number two, you have to have a secure connection when it comes to the Internet. This is people's private information and nurses of all people understand that this is that this needs to be protected so you have to be in one location you can't be hopping around and you can't be going from here to there oh i want to go on the road and be a medical coder no you can't do that you have to be in one place and a lot of times when you're doing remote coding sometimes they'll have different requirements like you have to go into the facility a couple of days a week or maybe once or twice a month or something like that so that is another thing um, that you have to keep in mind You have to have a secure connection and you have to be in a secure location in your home. You can't just be in the living room where everybody is (laughs) walking around willy nilly looking at your screen because it's private information. And it just because you're not in a hospital or facility does not mean that those barriers don't need to be in place, right? That you have to be as conscious about taking care of this patient information as you would if you were in a facility. Another question is, uh, well, I want to uh, live overseas and and code uh, remotely. Can't do that, guys, because, again, it has to do with having a secure uh, Internet connection. You have to be secure. This is not, again, something that you can just 
hop around and do whatever. Um, it takes a lot of security and you have to be aware of that. Um, another question is, should I get a degree? A lot of nurses that want to get into medical coding automatically think that they need to get degrees. There is the RHIA, which is the Registered Health Information Administrator. That is the bachelor's degree. Or there is the RHIT, which is the Registered Health Information Technician. The uh, RHIT is the associate's degree. Now, the RHIT, I will say this before I go on. The RHIT is going through a bit of a change. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be um, under under this change in the next few years. So now in, in the next few years as well. So um, you really have to do your research on it if you want to do it. Uh, I will try to find the link about the RHAT. Um, people have been asking me to do a video about that. I have been planning to do a video about this, but the thing is I have the schedule already done for the next two months when it comes to all of the topics for my show on my channel. Yes, because I film five days a week. <laughs> I have to be organized enough to have show topics for the next two months at a time. So uh, don't look forward to uh, a show about the RHIT anytime soon, um, at least not on my channel, because I'm, I'm, I'm already booked when it comes to the shows. So that is my answer on that one. Again, I will try to find the link for the RHIT and leave it in the description box below. Read it, go over it, decide if that's what you want to do. Um, but there's really nothing that I can say other than what's in that article. So um, it's entirely up to you. But it brings me to why I bring this up. Um, nurses think that they need to get the RHIT or RHIA because it's a degree, okay? And well, I wanted to get into medical coding, so I think I need to get the degree. The only reason that you should want to get the degree is if a couple of reasons. If you want to be in a manager position, because the RHIA and the RHIT are at the manager's table. The RHITs are usually the supervisors and they supervise the coders. They act as the deputy to the RHIA and they do the audits. They do a lot of those things. Of the RHIA and the RHIT, the RHIT is more of the worker bee, <laughs> but they're still in a leadership position. The RHIA is the one in the, is in the executive suite. They're the ones that's going to be running whole departments, running whole hospitals, and helping to do those kinds of things. They are the captain of the ship. <laughs> and they're the ones that it's, they're not going to really concentrate so much on coding, but they are going to be doing the manager side of the house. So if you get the RHIA um, and you want to be a coder, don't be surprised if the employer asks you to have a um, certification as well. It is more money to do that. To get a degree, obviously, it's more money, but then you got to get another certification on top of it. And then let's talk about the CEUs, the continuing education units, which I'm sure as a nurse, you already know about. <laughs> you got all this just to say that you want to be a medical coder when you could have just gone with the certification and avoided all this. So the pay difference between a degree holder and a, um, a credential holder, let's just say with the RHIT and the RH, um, the RHIT and a regular uh, credentialed medical coder like a CCS, a CCSP or a CCA or a CPC, right? It is, they run about the same Sometimes I've seen where RHITs make less than a regular credentialed medical coder. And I've seen RHITs make not that much more than a regular uh, credentialed medical coder. So it depends, again, on what you're doing. Um, if, if medical coding is what you want to do, then you should just stick with the certifications. All you need is one. And don't go crazy <laughs> getting a bunch of different uh, credentials because people understand what the credentials mean. Employers, they, they know. And if they see you trying to stroll up in there with a, with a whole alphabet after your name and you don't have experience yet, this isn't going to make sense because you're not going to get the payback that you think that you deserve having a whole alphabet after your name and you don't have any experience yet. The only time you should be adding, um, you should start off with one certification, though I will say that, okay? Um, whether you go with the CCS, the Certified Coding Specialist, and that is with the American Health Information Management Association, the CCA, the CCSP, well, the CCSP, you need to have experience, but 
The CCS and the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate, um, those are the ones with the American Health Information Management Association that you could start off with as a nurse. Um, if you are wanting to go with AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders, you can um, start with the CPC, okay? And it'll have a dash A at the end because that means apprentice. And uh, this is Certified Professional Coder. And you can start off with either one of those three, right? Any, any one of them. Um, you don't have to be certified through both associations. That's another waste of money. And it's a waste of time because you're essentially saying the same thing, right? Um, but with the CCS, the CCS is the gold standard of medical coding credentials because this one credential says that you can code both inpatient and outpatient. And with the CCA, you do have to understand how to code inpatient, but it's uh, outpatient as well. And with the CPC, it is only the outpatient side. So again, start with one credential. Uh, don't try to start adding on a bunch of different ones and, and thinking that it's going to give you more money. It's not. And a lot of times when you look in these job postings, the employers are just looking for one medical coding credential. That's it. So, you know, again, it's, I, I, I tell you these, <laughs> I tell you guys these things because I don't want you to waste your money. And there's a lot of self-serving um, things being said out there. Well, yeah, you know, you need this and you need this degree and you need that designation. And you need this and you need that. Guys, no. All you need is one certification. That's it. And I will leave some videos where I talk about the certifications down in the description box below that have much more detail <laughs> than um, I'm going to go into in this video, right? Uh, but... It, it is a good and very rewarding field for nurses to make the transition to in, into medical coding. Sometimes uh, nurses have retired and they want to still be able to use their uh, knowledge, but uh, not be in such a physically demanding position if, of being a nurse. And we have no patient contact at all. So if um, being around the patients is something that you kind of want to get away from, but you still want to be in the health care um, field or the health information field, this is the perfect thing. This is the perfect alternative for you um, because there is no patient contact. Unless you are doing billing, uh, which uh, if you're a nurse, that you know you, you would be better served as starting out as a medical coder. But if you wanted to start in billing, you definitely could if you wanted to. Uh, you will have some contact with patients then, like most likely over the phone, talking about the bills and things like that. Um, there's, there's plenty of opportunity there as well. So if that is what you want to start out, that is the only time you're going to have any kind of interaction with patients is if you're doing billing. But if you are doing the medical coding, you have no contact with the patients. Your contact is going to be with the provider and the other nurses because that is who we work with. Um, I, I work exclusively with the providers. Uh, I do sometimes do education with some of the nurses. It just depends on what's happening um, because sometimes they will request uh, a, a class with me and that's totally fine. It's, I mean, I'm equal opportunity. <laughs> I'll help anybody, you know, um, that I do not hesitate on because medical coding is a lot and it's, it's, it depends on who's teaching you that has a lot to do with it. I will say that too. Um, if you get a really good teacher, you're incredibly blessed. <laughs> if you get a teacher who is there proctoring from a book and saying, oh, well, it's this, this, and this, and not really teaching you those critical thinking skills, you need to try to um, learn more on your own. Okay, that is what I would suggest. Uh, what else was I going to say? There was something else. But... Um, Let's see. I talked about that. I talked about that. The best way for me to be creative and the way for me to have these thoughts flow fluidly is if I'm doing this off the cuff and that's generally what I do. <laughs> but then sometimes I get caught up in the conversation and I, and I get like this where I, <laughs> I have something I need to say and I forget. Oh, now I remember what I was going to say. Oh, so with the accelerated programs, oh, if you are a nurse and you get approached with, well, you know, we have this medical coding program and you can be done in less than four months or like four months or 16 weeks or something like that. 
choose very carefully, guys. I never recommend the accelerated medical coding programs. I think you still, even as nurses, still need at least nine months to learn medical coding. But it's, I mean, it's your choice. But I will say this, four months to learn medical coding is incredibly fast. Six months to learn medical coding is incredibly fast. But I mean, already having the background doesn't mean that you can grasp all of the uh, fundamentals of medical coding right away either. And if they tell you, oh, well, you'll get training on the job. Training on the job means that they'll teach you how to use like the, um, the electronic health record that's specific for that facility. If you have like experience working with Epic or something like that, that's already great. <laughs> it's going to be different on the coding side, okay? So that's what they mean is that um, you will get training on the electronic health record. Facilities and uh, doctor's offices will expect you as a certified medical coder to already know how to code. So if you feel lost or if it feels like a lot of information all at one time, that's what these accelerated medical coding medical coding programs are they're entirely too fast and a lot of times they'll tell you oh well you only need to study for a couple of hours in addition to our class time that's not true either if you are in an accelerated medical coding program and you are not working you need to be making it 40 hours a week of study even if you are a nurse it doesn't matter you still need to be putting in the the sweat time and if you are working then you need to be doing 20 hours per week Five hours on Saturday, five hours on Sunday, and two hours every single day during the weekday. It's only beneficial to you the more time you put into it, looking up the codes, getting your speed down, understanding the um, guidelines. That's all part of it. And I recommend reading the ICD-10-CM guidelines for reporting once a week, every week that you're in that program. It's only going to set you up for success. I'm just saying. So... With that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, I hope this was helpful for you if you are a nurse or um, um, a CNA or LPN or LVN. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I have a Q&A Tuesday every Tuesday. So if you want to submit a question, go ahead and post it below. Uh, give this video a like if it helped you. If you found value in this video, I hope you will also share it. So. If you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider, or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.